Welcome back. Well, as I said, I haven't got the government of the ANC here, but I'm trying as best to kind of give their perspectives. So I'm going to play another clip where the Minister of Sport admits that there are challenges in sports development, particularly in schools. Let's have a listen to what he has to say. We do have the challenges in the school sport rollout program. We are not moving as a unit as we are expected in terms of government departments, basic education and ourselves. My vision of sport, which I've outlined in my budget, is that I want in every school, primary, high school, kids to play. Well, how's that going to happen unless we put huge sums of money there? It's not just sums of money, though. It's also the ethics of teachers, I think. You know, you've got to have teachers accepting the fact this is a part of their job, is to promote um, sport and the body as well as the mind. I mean, I always think of um, Paul Jim, to me, is, is, is a wonderful school. It's a state school, but you have all the parents pitching in, you have the, the governing body, you have teachers, you have old boys coaching sport. Now, to me, every single school in the country should have that sort of ethos. And often they don't do it for extra money. But I'm also aware, if you look at inequality, you know, if you look at, compare them to a school, say, in the Eastern Cape, where we now find that almost a thousand don't even have electricity or water. You know, the vast historical resources that have gone to Paul Jim are so different to that. How are we ever going to, you know, make them more equal? So how do we reconcile these two quotes? Look, there, there, there are two fundamental issues here, and one is a point that Liz mentioned, which is that teachers also have to take ownership and see this as part of their job. But of course you've got a teachers union statute which is not willing to let its members work overtime without compensation. So that is another challenge which I think it's a disappointment that the government of the day isn't here because you know they are in an alliance with statute so they could have uh, pitched in there. But um, going back to the deputy president's comment, I think you know <laughs> the problem in this country is that politicians want to leverage the success of sport for their political mileage, you know. And so your it is, party does it? I, I advocate for less political interference in, in, in sport, you know, and I believe that if we are to be sincere about our efforts, if we put enough resources in sport, you know, we wouldn't see the exerted political pressure that there is in sport. Because quite frankly, do we need to be investing in hosting once of major events that come up you know in a period of four weeks rather than developing sports and i'll give you an example the national sports and recreation plan which is a good plan in terms of reviving sport in schools at community level encouraging mass participation in sport and it's a plan that you know it's a plan by the government that as an opportunity believe is a good plan for it to be funded fully for its implementation according to minister Mbaluda, it needs 10 billion and to put this in perspective the Department of Sports budget for last year was only just over one billion. And you have municipalities and provinces that get over 15% of the department's budget in what we call the municipal infrastructure grant. So let me ask you this. Would you be sufficiently courageous to say we should not be having the Commonwealth Games because we should put the money elsewhere? This is where we should put the money. My firm belief is that bidding for the 2020 Commonwealth Games is the focus that we don't need to be generating our resources and our energy. Are you going to call for energy. that? Absolutely. You know, I think, you know, we need to generate much of the energy and the resources that would go into that, into funding the sports, um, the national sports and recreation plan, which will help us produce generations of dominant young sports people who will actually make our nation proud and unite us more because we'll have a generation of winners, which is what the country wants. But, but can I just ask you this? I mean, I accept that on one level, but on another level, when we do have these games, it does create an extraordinary unified, mm. and it does inspire people to believe that they should be sports people. Well, I mean, people need bread and circuses. No, absolutely. I think they do just as well in their abroad, though. You know, yeah. look, you know, like Shad Klo, um, who's so incredibly charming, and um, you know, Kasta Semenya before the before the upset. You know, they, they're wonderful examples and they provide heroes to young people, which I think is also very important. So to have these, yeah, these sports people who excel is very important um, because they talk about what it takes to get there, the sacrifice and the hard work. Um, and then they're also extremely patriotic, so we can all invest in them. But I think they do just as well in London or Barcelona. I think the effect is just as good as if they were in Cape Town, to be honest. And it's a hell of a lot cheaper for us. I mean, just talking about that, I just wanted to raise something with you, because I spoke about the money. Now, um, this may be slightly wrong, but the estimates that South Africa shelled out about $3.9 billion on the 2010 Games. Yeah. Uh, that's, 
That's to, on today's money, slightly less time, but it's roughly uh, almost four billion, almost four, uh, sorry, uh, 40 billion yeah. rand. Mm. Now, if, if I gave you 10 billion of that, I mean, yeah. pretty to goodness. So why is this not happening? Why do we not see this? What is going on? You write a lot about rugby. What I don't understand is you write the stuff, it's in, I read this, I think it's absolutely compelling that, that, that there should be a sort of series of developmental concerns, with, but somehow it all gets elided over. Although I did notice after our last program there was a bit of a gefuffle, <laughs> and not because of the program. But it does seem to me that there's a complacency here which is extraordinary. Yeah, I don't understand it because, I mean, the debate remains so polarised and shallow, which is really bad. You know, people shout racism at Springbok team and, and then no one looks at the deeper issue and it just it remains a sort of mud, mudslinging thing at a certain level. No one looks at systems and how we can, you know, just how we can change things and what needs to be done. And, I mean, it has to be, I mean, I think obviously you can blame the government to a certain extent because they haven't got that edu basic education and sport is still fighting over who's responsible for education in schools. And, I mean, to me, that's just really irritating. You know, they must sort that out. Yeah, that's just a poor governance thing. But, so can I ask you, yeah. from, from, from your perspective, I mean, in Parliament, what kind of, I mean, is there going to now be a serious debate about these questions? I mean, if you took 40 billion... I accept that we'd have to take off that all the money we made from the uh, the tourists, although that seems to be uh, this particular paper in the Journal of African Economics calculated it cost us thirteen thousand dollars per visitor. So that's yeah. roughly one hundred and thirty thousand rand. That's a huge sum of money. I doubt whether we were getting all that back. The real question is, how does one transform the debate? Look, I think you know we need we need to be much more courageous than that. I think, you know, there is, there is value to certain events at certain crucial time to be hosting them, you know. And I think what happens is that as, as a host country or a host city, what we should always try to do is to maximize the return on investment in, in this event. And I don't think the World Cup, and the World Cup is a terrible example to use because FIFA is a law unto themselves, you know. So what they basically do is to um, put governments into these contracts that are more beneficial to them to the house to the to the host country so there's no debate about the fact that you know um, general public infrastructure and public transport in certain um, municipalities has improved as a result of the World Cup right has the state of football improved um, in the country as a result of the World Cup arguably not you know and when you host a major event like that you want that correlation to be there that it will in, it will lead to increased improvement of the state of the sport in this country you know and some people would argue spain won the world cup on a, um, in in south africa in 2010 when they host, it took them 30 years after hosting that cup to win it so hopefully you know if we go on that standard it might take Bafana okay i, I want to get back to that particular issue but i need to take a break first